Hi, I'm David and welcome to my small little YouTube channel. You know, from my childhood I was kind of fascinated with this place in our forest in the town I grew up in. And we are calling it Panzerwald, which is German for tank forest. Because there was, or maybe there still is, kind of a US training area and ammunition storage facility in that forest. And when you're a kid, this always seems kind of mysterious, dangerous, and some would say forbidden. I remember the stories growing up and walking through the forest with my parents, and they telling me not to stray off the paths, because there could be mines still in there, which of course isn't true, but um, it still kind of, it spurs your imagination as a kid. So... I, I'm not a historian in any shape, way or form, but during lockdown last year I started to dig more into that forest, look a bit more around, went for a bit of exploration and I just thought why not turn the things I learned and discovered while being there and turn it into this YouTube video. So for a bit of historical context. On the 8th of May 1945, the US or the Allied forces defeated Germany and after that they took over a bunch of old military installation of the Nazis and also they created new ones to enforce the peace, to aid with rebuilding and of course later on to fortify against the Soviet Union in the Cold War. And a lot of these were barracks, um, there were training grounds, there were ammunition storage facilities, there were airports, um, radio installations, both for transmitting propaganda to the Soviet Union and also um, for spying purposes and also to communicate across the globe. And in Germany there is over 260 of these facilities and other installations and only 40 of those still remain um, being active today and are they are gradually being closed down and most of them are closed down after the cold war kind of fizzled out and ended and near where i live there were two major installations within the forest and there were a whole bunch of different barracks and also other military installations, there still is an airport, there still is some radio installations which are now in civilian hands, but starting in the 90s these areas were slowly turned over back to the German government and the forests have been reopened to the general public. And there's two main areas that we kind of can explore when going into the forest. And the one is the ARSP 951, which is the reserve ammunition storage point. And here there was a lot of ammunition stored within the forest, which was guarded by a perimeter fence. And what I found out is that what is confirmed that was stored there is the Honest John rockets. And there were maybe around 1400 stored there over time, of course. And what's remarkable about that rocket is that it was the first surface-to-surface -surface nuclear capable rocket in the US arsenal. And later on in the 60s it was also able to carry some nerve gas agents. And But there is no, no proof that either uh, nerve gas or nuclear material was ever stored in that forest, even though there were a lot of rumors about that, but the wall thickness of the ammunition, um, yeah, ammunition storage places is only 20 centimeters thick, which is quite small. If you want to store actual nuclear material, they would usually also fortify it against bomb attacks from above, but that didn't happen here. And all in all, the perimeter fence is quite weak and there's only one layer of it. So the indication is that in this forest there wasn't any nuclear or nerve gas material stored. 
but there still were these high explosive rockets stored there. And in, in total, in this area in the forest, there's 76 earth covered ammunition stores and they kind of separate in two general categories. There is the white doors, which are bigger and seem to be older. They have kind of like these folding doors that open up into it. And they also, they don't have any pillars holding up the ceiling. So they have a lot of storage space in them. And there's also the other type, which I call the green doors. And these have large sliding doors. They are a bit smaller and they also have pillars supporting the ceiling. Some of them are open. Of both types, you can find open um, storage facilities. We used to call them bunkers, but of course they're not underground, so they aren't actually bunkers. But as a kid, you kind of go with the more fun sounding term. And even today, I refer to them as bunkers. But they are actually earth covered storage um, stores. So within those, you now you can actually rent them from the local government and there's some farm equipment and stuff and uh, wood stored in there for drying purposes N nothing really of value and some of them are open as i said and i will put images and maybe even a small video up on screen parallel to this and so it's fun to explore and you can climb on them they have two air intakes or one outtake maybe um, on the top, which you can also look into from um, below if the bunker is open and you can climb them quite easily. They have a kind of like 45 degree angle to climb up upon, but there's also a railing on the front, which can help you to scale them. And what's remarkable is that most of them are very dry and there is no real damage that you can see from the inside of these bunkers so they were constructed rather well and so here we see reserve ammunition storage point 951 and all the points of interest that i found within it as you can see they are spread out evenly over this area while the area still kind of encloses a bit more space than what can be seen here and there's a lot of them in a row and we can also take a quick look at one of these bunkers as you can see we always have these four numbers that indicate which bunker it is precisely and we also have different locations around here like this entrance gate where a lot of infrastructure is still left. The other area that can be found within the forest is the PSP 54, which is this priest dock point, which also moves over into another part of forest, which doesn't belong to Fienheim, but to Lambertheim. And that area is more commonly referred to as the Panzerwald, the tank forest. And but it's not the one I was more familiar with growing up as it's a bit further from where I grew up. And in there you find smaller earth covered ammunition stores and there's also fewer of them. There's only 36 of them, um, but they still seem to have um, contained other types of ammunitions. One of the rumors I found online was that Abram tanks ammunition was stored there. And with that, again, there comes up this rumor of um, nuclear um, ammunition, which is quite a big concern in the time. And I found out that there actually was a type of ammunition for the Abram tanks, the depleted uranium armor piecing ammunition. But the general Abram tanks were only equipped to handle this types of ammunition um, after 19. 98 and by that time that area was already closed down so again it seems unlikely that any nuclear material was stored within this facility at all and if you walk through this forest further and explore deeper there you will also happen upon three shooting ranges 
and these shooting ranges were longer in use than the actual um, stor ammunition storage facilities because they were um, only abandoned in the two early 2010s, I, I think it was 2012. They were actually completely abandoned. They did some lighter uh, training on there after that. And what you can find within there is some fun stuff because, well, in the biggest of them, it seems that they were shooting, at least shooting uh, 40 millimeter standard grenade launchers because we actually found this um, yeah, training ammunition, which, how do I know it's training ammunition? You might be able to see this orange um, residue in here, and that's actually a known type of component of the M781 trainings ammunition for grenade launchers, which <laughs> funnily enough, you can actually buy this training ammunition online um, if you have a ammunition license for small and slow explosives, or higher of course. And what's even cooler is that I was able to found, find this 3D model of this um, trainings ammunition. And here would be the, the propellant in here and also the powder in the front. And then you put on the cap and then you could shoot this ammunition through your grenade launcher attachment. And it's fun to explore these types of areas because when we went there, we flew with my drone over the area and we saw this little kind of like bunker looking thing, an actual bunker. It was going down into the earth before we went inside because you had to kind of find an opening in the fenced in area. And there is actually a way to slip through because at one point, some of the fence was removed so you can enter it. And then going exploring, you can find these actual targets, which look like houses and all over the place, you find remnants of this blue plastic shells. And also you find a lot of these kind of like cone type, um, which seem kind of like to make them weigh more or less what the actual grenade would weigh, because of course the powder is much lighter than the actual explosives and shrapnel that's in those grenades usually. So we went exploring through this and because of the way we entered, we had to walk through everything to get to this little bunker, which we saw from looking over the area and getting there, sadly, the thing was only maybe about a meter and 70 centimeters deep because it was uh, filled in with sand. And we actually would like to dig down there, but um, it's quite difficult to do that. And it's unsure if there is even anything below that point. It could have been only a small hole in there to shoot um, from below at a target. That might have been a training scenario we used there. Um, but we don't know. Maybe there is something deeper going on. And talking to an older relative of mine who was in one of the um, shooting clubs around here and he told me that back in the day the the army had kind of like an allotment of training ammunition or general ammunition they had to fire in a given day and if it, if it was raining they would dig holes around the perimeter of this training facility and dump the ammunition in there because it was raining and they didn't want to shoot it. And then these kind of, um, he and other guys would go around and dig up this ammunition and use it for their own shooting practices, which is kind of interesting what was going on back there. And the second training or shooting range we found is all overgrown in the forest. There's nothing really left, but on that one, which was interesting enough, I fly a DJI drone and they have, of course, these GPS zones to keep you out of areas and not endanger maybe um, planes and also not enter highly restricted other areas. And this old place in the forest if you don't know what's happening there you wouldn't even realize it 
you actually enter into a militarized zone, but you can unlock it if you register yourself and um, approve that you can fly there and know what you're doing. But it's still, after all this time it has abandoned, it's still marked a, as a US military ground. But because it's not in active use, uh, you can get the allowance to enter it. And I'm still, I'm, I have a ticket open with DJI to remove this area completely, as there's no reason for it being restricted nowadays. And the last shooting range is also quite interesting because there's a lot of infrastructure still left there and you can actually find um, the small gummy pieces rubber pieces which dampened the shooting that was done there but it was very close range and the whole area looks very interesting there's a lot of um, infrastructure as i said still left there so it's fun to explore this uh, have a look over it with the drone to get a feeling of what's happening there. And all the material I have shared in here, if you're interested in any of that, just contact me and I will give you links to get a download of the original material as well. Um, I also had a look in some of the um, Fienheim chronics, which are around but there isn't any real references to this uh, place. I think there might be something more in our local library and local history museum, but because of COVID, I wasn't able to go there. Um, maybe there might be a follow-up video. Also, if you have additional resources, please uh, let me know, contact me, write me in the comments to um, increase the yeah my knowledge of this place. I find it really fascinating and after having discovered all of this, I think this place hasn't lost any of its magic. It actually increased in its magic to me. And it's even more fun to walk through it, thinking about the different types of ammunition that could have been stored there. Maybe some of the training scenarios that were run there. Also, where would have the where would the cars have driven through? There's some in the in some of the pavement there's or the, the asphalt there is actually imprinted into the asphalt there's uh, tracks of the tanks you can still see and feel which is it's kind of a living breathing thing of history which isn't that long ago but it kind of also feels like unreal that tanks rolled through this forest it yeah i i find it fascinating and I hope I can explore more of these types of areas in the future. In the description below, you will also find links to all the resources that I used, different forums I read around this topic. And also you can find some links to the map material that I made. Also all the software and hardware I used during the filming of this video, I will have a reference in there so that you get a feeling of what was involved in this project. So if you like this type of content and would like to see me explore more areas of interest, this of course doesn't have to be of historical context. I'm also thinking about some different technology solutions I want to try out and have a quick video about it. I would be really happy if you would subscribe and also comment how I could improve these kind of videos.